Okay, hi guys, welcome to Garden Radio. This is Mike from Exeker. Would you like to introduce yourself? Go ahead. Mike, are you there? Um, yeah. Hi, um, would you like to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the interview. Sure. Um, yeah, um, Mike or Exeker, uh, I'll turn to a story, and I have um, a couple of ghost books, Ghosts of Maryland and Ghosts and Legends of Oklahoma, which just came out this past autumn, and then I have um, a mystery novel, Deadly Airs. Um, I'm also a uh, researcher with Society of Haunted. Awesome. Okay. And one of your, uh, I have all your books up for, for people to see. The first book, uh, Ghosts and Legends of Oklahoma, was that the first one, or was that? Uh, that was the uh, the second ghost book, basically my, my third book overall. That's the one that just came out. Oh, okay. Um, in September. Okay, and um, what exactly does it discuss? What legends did you put in? Do you have any of your favorites that you wrote about? No, I have floated with a lot of different stories from across the state. I call it the, you know, a paranormal cross-section of history. Because uh, you know, it has stories of you know, Native Americans, outlaws, uh, even have some Civil War stories in there, um, tornadoes, old saloons, you, know, you, you name it, of the Old West got it in there. Um, a couple of my uh, particular favorites are uh, like Still Lined In and Guthrie, uh, which is it's really a classic haunted house. Um, you know, it's got the, the doors that creak open on their own, you know, things are falling off the walls. Um, but I got a fantastic picture of a uh, white mist uh, floating through the air. Um, a lot of things go on in the house. It's never quiet. Um, a couple others, uh, like a uh, kind of a lesser known place, uh, the Black Bear uh, Church and Cemetery. It's really out in the middle of nowhere. Um, old abandoned church out there, but um, so it it's really has a lot uh, going on with it. Um, we've caught like illuminated balls of light out there. There's a lot of shadows running around. Um, in the cemetery, we, we get a, uh, a number of different uh, EVPs out there. Um, you know, from crazy, weird, weird ones like uh, like keep her warm, which makes no sense, to um, one time when we were making an observation um, about this individual having two different headstones. One was his uh, you know, family stone, and then the other was the um, uh, stone he got from the baby. Um, you know, we got to be correct. So, a lot of that could be out there as well. You know, awesome. A couple of favorites there. Okay, and then on your uh, bio that I was looking over, it says that you were on The Haunted. When was that? Right. Uh, yeah, we were on The Haunted, uh, their season two series premiere uh, back in April, and that was the Monster in the Closet episode. Um, to those familiar with the show, it's the uh, it's the one where um, we're, we're going through the house with, with Carl Johnson doing the blessing. In the middle of that, uh, Callus and the girl there um, kind of doubles over. Um, and then the wind was kicking up outside as so we kind of you know, pushed outside. Um, but it was a really, really interesting experience uh, you know, being on the show and just you know, investigating the home and helping out the family. Okay. Well, that's really cool, and I also noticed that you, um, you have a couple different things in the bio I wanted to talk about. The Ghost Dorian, how did you come up with that nickname? <laughs> well, uh, I came up with the nickname because um, in my books I focus a lot on um, the history of what's going on at, at the location. It's not, you know, just stories of, um, you know, ghosts rallying around the night knocked on the walls and things like that. Um, I go into the, the back story of the, of the location. Um, for example, um, with Mount Airy Mansion out in Maryland, um, there's, when I was doing the research for uh, that house, there was a little one-liner that I came across in a, in a couple of different locations where it just said that there was the uh, spirit of a more of a girl that haunted the home. She was depressed, um, you know, because she had lost her true love. Doesn't really tell you, you know, much about this girl, so. 
Okay. Um, also, in your book, Ghosts of Maryland, uh, from one of the members in the audience, they were asking, what is, what in your opinion is a good hot spot there? What's the one of the best that you've found so far? For some reason, signal died. Um, okay. Yeah, the signal died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael, I know. Um, okay. Let's see. He's on the road driving, so that could have been why. Okay, in the meantime, um, we're going to look at the site. Your call has been... He lost signal as he was driving, apparently. So, hold on one sec. Yeah, um, Mike Ricksucker, a famous author, and he also writes for the Examiner. That was the next thing. Okay. Um... Yep, there's definitely a ghost in the machine. Um, no, there's an alternate number. He was on the road driving. He said the interview would he'd be on the road somewhere. So we lost Mike. I guess there will be a part two whenever he calls back, if he does. Um, yeah, so uh, Mike Wicksecker, on his bio it says that he's the author of Ghosts and Legends, Oklahoma. Oh, here we go. Hey, Mike, I guess the signal died over there? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're thinking I switched from one tower to the other. It's work. Yeah, I uh, figured because you said you're on the road, right? I've been, been flying around all day. Yeah. Okay. Well, um. All right. Well, the question before the signal died was, um, in your opinion, what are some of the major hot spots in Maryland? Oh, some of the hot spots in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they have such a loaded state uh, with, with all the Any of your favorites? There. But, um, like Samuel Mudd House um, has a lot of great activity going on there. Um, yeah, if you go to um, downtown Baltimore around Fells Point area, um, downtown uh, Frederick, uh, a lot of historical section there. Um, I was talking about Mount Airy Mansion before. Uh, there's <laughs> really a lot of different locations. Uh, Ellicott City, it gave the old uh, historic section. Uh, uh, Ellicott City as well, that's really good. Okay, and what about, um, I was going to ask, the Society of the Haunted, uh, when did you guys start up exactly? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch, catch the question. Oh, um, Society of the Haunted, when did that exactly start up? What year? When did... Society of the Haunted? Oh, Society of the Haunted? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've been with, uh, with that group for uh, a couple of years now. We were you know, okay PRI when we were on the show The Haunted, but, um, you know, you know how everything goes with our normal group, so basically we just, we didn't care for our leadership too much, so we just reformed it. But it's essentially the same group that's been together for a couple of years now. Um, and you, know, you can go to societyofhaunted.com and uh, you know, catch all of our adventures out there. But you know, we have the videos out there for the haunted episode as well. And a lot of other things that we put together on our own. Okay. And then uh, lifesgifts.com, what exactly is that? I'm sorry, what was that? Lifesgift.com. Oh, life's gift. Um, that is. Rick Hayes' uh, website. He's a uh, he's a uh, medium, but um, I do um, some writing uh, for his site twice a year, um, and I kind of hit up some uh, uh, paranormal aspects for him. Okay.
Okay, and then you do a weekly um, a weekly column on the examiner? Then yeah, I, I have the, the weekly column there on examiner.com. Um, I'm the Oklahoma City Paranormal Examiner. Uh, so about once a week, I'll put out a, a new article. I just had one um, this week about moving objects during paranormal investigations and how, you know, they're, they're pretty rare. Uh, you know, we're calling out, you know, an object, you, know, you knock something over, you throw something, whatever, but um, it, it doesn't happen very often. Right. Actually, this past weekend, however, and it's kind of what uh, prompted the idea, um, I actually had a, uh, a small box um, thrown down next to me, so it was, uh, it was kind of an eventful evening this past weekend, but um, yeah, we go to camera.com, the uh, Oklahoma City Paranormal uh, link. Okay, and then also behind, beyond, what is it? Beyond the Limits Paranormal Magazine. Where exactly is that? That's a new one. Yeah, I've been beyond, um, yeah beyond the Limits, I've written for them um, a couple of times. I don't write for them as much. Um, and it's, I think it's Beyond the Limits Magazine.com. It's the actual uh, website. Okay. And actually, I've been, I just started writing for. Um, Dark Media City. Um, we're going to be actually doing a uh, paranormal travel guide out there, and uh, with an interactive map and that sort of thing. So uh, that's going to be really interesting. Awesome. And then I also noticed on your site that it says you have a lot of events coming up. Can you get into, get into that a little bit more? Anything that you want to tell the audience as far as events or? Right, well, um, yeah, I just you know, this past autumn had. My, uh, my tour out east was really fantastic. Uh, you know, the highlight of that was Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Um, had a book signing out there. And, uh, anybody who's watched Journal World Challenge probably remembers um, uh, Copperhead, Greg Graham. Um, he, he's a friend of mine, so uh, you know, he gave me a trip to a place like this, with him that night. We had a lot of good activity going on. Um, upcoming events in um, March of this year. Uh, they're still trying to nail down the location, but um, I'll either be out in, uh, it, it's going to be in the Kansas, Missouri area along the, the border there. Um, the uh, group out there, Paranormal Adventures uh, USA, they they run tours in Topeka, Kansas City. And um, I did an event for them uh, last year at the Bell Winery, uh, which is actually uh, in Missouri. Haunted wine room, just great with every wine. <laughs> that, was, that was a great event, but uh, they're going to be doing something uh, similar this year, but at a different location. So I'll keep my website updated for when that happens, but that'll be about the middle to end of March. Okay, that's awesome. And then, um, did you have any videos you wanted to show the audience? I'm actually on your video page right now. Um, were there any, like, uh, I noticed the Ghosts and Legends? Of Oklahoma, is that one a promo or is that a whole? Episode? Yeah, I have the, the Ghost and Legends of Oklahoma video series. Um, I'll be having another one coming out here pretty soon. Um, I don't have an exact date nailed down, but um, yeah, basically through those, I'm bringing to light um, a lot of the stories that are in the book. Like I have uh, the Civil War uh, stories, uh, so it touches on Fort Gibson, Fort Washington. Uh, uh, I have a Fort Reno one with uh, Route 66 as well. Okay, and um, then from John yeah, so in the audience... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm from John in the audience who wanted to know your favorite place uh, to investigate. Uh, favorite place to investigate um, so far has been the stone mine, just because there's so much activity going on. If you walk into the house, you know you're going to get something. Um, and it's just, you know, like I said before, it's really like your classic haunted house. I just love the ambiance of, of the house. Okay. That's cool. Um, all in all, when did you first get started in the paranormal? Um, well, I, I've been um, officially investigating for a couple of years. been writing about it for a little bit longer than that, but um, I've always had an interest in uh, ghost stories. You know, when, I was, when I was a kid, I um, you know, I, I wrote mystery stories, wrote some, you know, some small ghost stories, things like that, you know, all 
was after the second grade. And you know, I always thank my mom for saving those stories um, that I wrote. But, you know, I even uh, created a ghost at my grandparents' house to, uh, you know, to scare my sister and my cousin. Did a good job with that. And then we just ran with it for a while. And, you know, the house was haunted. And we created all these, you know, uh, like a game that went along with it. It was just a lot of fun. So kind of took that as, as a kid. Um, and then uh, my mother had gotten me a um, book called Yankee Ghost by Hans Holster. It was just, you know, that kind of, you know, piqued my interest even more. So that was kind of the, um, kind of the seed, you know, years ago um, that kind of got my interest in it. But really it's been like the last few years um, when I got into uh, more of my writing that was kind of, Awesome. Okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience? Um, yeah, you know, if they uh, you know, have an interest in you know, historic ghost stories, please feel free to check out my website, uh, MikeRickSecker.com. You know, I have, um, you know, have some free stories out there to read. I have uh, the videos to watch. And also check out SocietyTheHaunted.com as well. All righty. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and you're always welcome back. Thank you, Danielle. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Alrighty, guys. That was Mike Ricksecker. And um, next up, we have the Midnight Paranormal Society right after a short break. Talk to you guys soon.